know, we're just talking about some of the tips of this iceberg of Obamacare and its impact on the U.S. economy. And uh, layoffs are piling up. They wonder why the jobs are going. This is the craziest thing. Why is our government... Uh, like they can't figure it out. Why don't people want to hire other people? It's like, you know, have you ever talked to somebody in government that really understood business? It's like they think we can print money just like they can. And we've got to make money to be able to add, you know, people and all their benefits and now all this incredible weight of Obamacare. But not only that, the confusion, the absolute confusion, the madness. And then you feel like you got a Democles democ sword hanging over you. You're doing your best to comply. Now, I felt like that with the IRS for a long time. Every year, you know, we've got professional uh, accountants that do our taxes, and we get audited and, uh, you know, by an outside source every year as a ministry. And we're doing the best we can to, to do everything right. But when you talk to the IRS, and most of them don't understand it, most of the IRS agents or people you talk to, the IRS doesn't even understand their own code anymore. It is so outrageous, so outlandish. Now, I think, you know, one of the things, this the presidential candidates that are promoting a flat tax, a much more simplified tax plan, this is absolutely crucial if America is not going to have an absolute crushing meltdown in the economy. So uh, all these things are coming to bear on our economy. They're like hitting this quarter, the fourth quarter of 2015. I believe that you're going to see certain things unfolding 2016 uh, that could be really scary. Now, here's what a central bank profit says. Now, this is... Uh, uh, He's not a Christian prophet, not a biblical prophet, but he. this is the guy who gave this warning, is the one that the world economists look to, is this guy is so discerning, so accurate in his forecast. and uh, But they called him an economic prophet who foresaw the Lehman crisis with uncanny accuracy. I'm reading this article is even more worried about the world's financial system now. He, uh, the de devaluations are spreading to every region. All the major central banks are stoking asset bu bubbles deliberately to put off the day of reckoning. Bubbles are growing everywhere. Remember, it was a bubble bursting that created the 2008 crash. This time, emerging markets have been drawn into the quagmire as well, corrupted by the leakage from quantitative easing in the West. The devastation from our quantitative easing policy is going to be unbelievable when it hits, and it has to hit. There are economic physics, and you can't violate them without consequences, and they are going to come home. Now, here's what this man goes on to say. William White, Swiss-based chairman of the OECD's review committee, says, we are in a world that is dangerously unanchored. We're seeing true currency wars, and everybody is doing it, and I have no idea where this is going to end. This is the, the one of the most esteemed economic prophets. This one other thing he said there, he said the global elastic has been stretched even further than it was in 2008 on the eve of the Great Recession. The excesses, the excesses have reached almost every corner of the globe. Combined public and private debt is 20% of GDP higher today. He was speaking of than 2008. We are holding a tiger by the tail. And, you know, it's amazing how we have so many parallels today to the conditions just before the 2008 crash, except they're more extreme now. They're bigger now. Now, here's a couple of others. I think the next big factor, and this is what I've been telling our people, and and uh, if you tune in on much of what we say, watch China. China is the biggest factor right now that's going to impact the world economics 
And uh, here's a little headline about China. Now, this was back in July, July 27th, the end of July. But says China losing control as stocks crash despite emergency me measures. And it's like the Chinese authorities appear to have been testing the waters to see what would happen if they start intervening in their markets. Key word there, almost slips by everybody. That is a statement that China is manipulating their own markets. And they know what this can do. This could be catastrophic to have government manipulating their markets. So they tried to do a test. What will happen if we start intervening in the market? They said the market verdict was swift and brutal. They had a bigger stock market crash than we did in 1929. And this is what they want to say. They have gotten themselves into a very difficult situation. They have put a lot of credibility on the line to shore up prices, and this credibility has been badly damaged. And uh, now you say, why isn't China more in the news now? Why? You know, it was very little about the Chinese stock market crash that, you know, some estimated that in one day, 100 million investors were wiped out in a day, many more over the period of that uh, economic turmoil, the uh, market turmoil they had in China. And uh, it's going to have long-term consequences already showing up in the global economy. Why don't we hear more about it? Well, China has a very controlled media as well as controlled economy. And they just don't let the word out about a lot of things. And guess what? We have very few um, worldwide media uh, reporters, investigators that uh, really understand what is going on in the world economy. What most of them do is just, you know, cut and paste and print what others have read and said. They don't really understand what's going on, so they're not going to pick this up on their own. So they're not going to write their own forecast and all. So we've got to get that. We've got to see between the lines. We've got to see what others cannot see. And uh, this is obvious, you know, what's going on in China. And I tell you, there are some major cracks in the Chinese economy. They're, they're bigger than cracks. I mean, bigger than fault lines. They are massive, and there's going to be a day of reckoning there. They've done some things really good, and they've done some things really bad because they didn't understand a lot of these issues. They had never dealt with a crash like that before. They didn't know what to do. They did some things that I think are only exacerbating the underlying turbulence that's going on. Now, you know, the uh, Zhao, their, uh, the global finance chief says, says sought to contain Tensions over currency movements with China suggesting the August devaluation won't be repeated anytime soon. China did it a couple of days later. Uh, anyway, everybody's scrambling. What does this mean? And they finally said, China finally admitted, this, this has been a bubble bursting in China. Nothing less than that. And if you understand the world economy, that's one of the last things you want to hear. A major bubble has burst. That means when a bu bubble bursts, if you're burst a balloon, that thing will fly all over the place. You don't know where it's going next, and it's going to deflate. And uh, it says China is on the defensive as it's slowing the economy and market turbulence and shockwaves through the emerging markets. The, these are economic tsunamis that are right now coming out from China pretty regularly. You can only mask them so long. And a lot of our government authorities and all, they try to mask things like this because they know one of the things that will cause a, an economy to shrink is fear. And they don't want, you know, and sometimes news will only create fear. And will, unless you show a decisive plan for dealing with these issues. And they don't know what to do. They don't know how to plan through this. Uh, because they don't really understand the world economy, so they're just masking. There's a whole lot that's not being told to us, but you can pick it out. You can discern what's going on. 
But China's economic growth, this is a major factor because China's economic growth has shored up the entire world's economy. I think if you remove the factor of the huge market, emerging market that China has been over the last couple of decades, you remove that from the world's economy, we would have been in a long, protracted, unending recession at best. I think we would have been in another great depression, maybe worse than the first one. And this is what some people are saying we're headed for right now. Not just recession, depression. And the last one lasted way too long because the people who had their hand on the controls didn't know how to do it, didn't know what to do. And we're in that same state today. We've got a vacuum of leadership almost across the board. Not just in government, we've got a vacuum of leadership in business as well. But I think we can definitely expect more tur turmoil in China. They got some major issues to deal with in their accounting and in the valuation of their yuan, which, by the way, they just valued what they wanted to. Not connected to anything. Now, I don't think very much of Voltaire's philosophy. But one thing he said that I think was an absolute truth is that every fiat currency will ultimately return to its true value. Nothing. Right now, that's all we have in the world. Fiat currencies. And we've got to look at these things. Now, I know I'm downloading an awful lot of negatives on you right now. There, you know, How do we survive another day? It's like the astronomers. How are we going to make it through another day? The universe is trying to kill us. And somebody's keeping us. I believe we've had the, the world economies would have collapsed a long time ago if somebody wasn't keeping us. And we know that someone. We've got an edge. But we've got to have some knowledge and wisdom for what's coming. So we've been having some real fun now talking about all these issues. And, you know, in just a few minutes, we're going to be finished with the good part, <laughs> the, the happy things. <laughs> really, you, you look at what's going on in the world, and uh, it is madness. But, you know, the great time of trouble, the great tribulation, is the result of mankind thinking we were smart enough to do this without God. We don't really need God. We can do this. No, we can't. And we're going to learn for all time that we need him. Now, I think every human problem is a result of us turning from God and trying to do things on our own without him. But the answer to all of these is let's return to God. We need wisdom from above. We need one of the spiritual gifts we need more than any other right now is what's called the gift of a word of wisdom, which is supernatural wisdom from above. We've seen this demonstrated. And, uh, and I believe we have access to this in the body of Christ. Now that God is raising up true sons of Issachar, or Issachar, true sons who will know the times, but also have the wisdom of knowing what God's people should do. And we want to get, get to that. I'm going to, you know, lay out a little bit on what I think, you know, uh, we should be doing. But I'm looking also to you to know. The best I can know is part. So I'm looking at every one of you to get your part here from above. It may not be the whole picture, but it may be a very crucial ingredient to the strategy. Because as we see in Daniel 2, the statue that represents all of man's kingdoms is collapsing. God is building his kingdom. It's what our Kingdom Business Association is all about. Being a part of that which is growing. I mean, how would you like to invest in a stock that absolutely cannot go down? It's impossible that it go down. It can only go up. That's the kingdom of God, we're told. Isaiah said, there will be no end to the increase of his government and his authority. So we've got to start doing things God, God's ways. Now, man, is it's getting more and more entangled. 
Every time they try to fix something, it's like punching the tar baby and they're stuck here. Then they punch you and they're stuck here and they now they're all stuck. Nobody knows what to do. And the crisis is getting greater and greater. Well, we this should not take us unawares. We should be very not only aware of this happening, but also know what we need to do. And it's not just save ourselves. It's not just hoard what we've got. We've got to have a much bigger vision than that. But I think the best you're going to see in 2016 is a worldwide economic slide. And I'm saying the best because I'm just praying for a gentle slide, not a catastrophic one. But there are earthquakes, there are potential economic earthquakes that could create unbelievable economic tsunamis around the world. And uh, But the only way we can be free of that is build our lives, our businesses, whatever uh, the Lord has given us authority over or responsibility over, build it on the principles of the kingdom. There has never been a more important time for something like the kingdom business and an association of those who are doing business according to the king's principles and the king's ways. But anyway, here's another factor. I'm still throwing a few. These are all factors, and Lord willing, these all fit together for you. It is drawing a bigger and bigger picture. But here's what it says. China, this is another headline. China's rich seek shelter from stock market storm in foreign property. You wonder why our real estate properties are, are staying stable and going up even. What's shoring up the U.S. dollar? I'll tell you what it is. There's nowhere else to go. As shaky as we are in the U.S., we're probably the most stable currency up until other recent events have started happening in just the last few weeks that could change that dramatically. And I'm talking about Russia's intervention. This is going to be a key economic factor in the world. I'm talking about Russia's intervention and beginning to take initiative, not just in the Middle East, but in world affairs. And one of our major important business magazines named Putin as the most powerful person in the world, even before the recent initiatives he's been taking. That shouldn't be. You know, we have a void of leadership. We have a vacuum of leadership. Putin is filling it. And he's doing it in such a decisive way that I tell you, nations around the world within two weeks started turning to Russia and away from America as their hope for the future. I believe this has been what's happened over just the last few weeks of Russian intervention in Syria. And you better believe it's going way beyond there. It's been the biggest geopolitical shift since the fall of the Iron Curtain. It's not going to bode well for us economically. And I think it is going to bode well for Russia. I think Europe is going to be in real jeopardy. They're going to have to turn to Putin also, and they're going to have to turn away from America. He's showing strong, decisive leadership. Now, in military uh, strategy, as well as world affairs, and as well as the economy, in economics, seizing the initiative is crucial. Keeping the initiative is crucial. Once you lose the initiative and you're on the defensive, you can never win until you take the initiative back. If you start up a business, you've got to go into the marketplace with strong initiative, with vision, with purpose, and you've got to keep that for as long as you're going to grow your business. Once you start becoming defensive, now there are times you have to be. You have to become defensive just to survive. But you can never win and you can never keep growing in, on that stature. You're going to keep shrinking. 
just trying to survive. We've gone through that. Most businesses, most countries go through periods of that. Most militaries go through it during the period of a protracted war. There are times of offense and defense, but you've got to ultimately, if you're going to win, you've got to seize the initiative and hold it and keep it until the victory's complete. Now, right now, American business is having to fight its own government more than even market conditions. You know, we've been losing world market share worldwide, not just because there's cheaper labor everywhere. Almost everybody would have much more desire to manufacture their goods closer to their markets, if not in the countries of their major markets, which America used to be. Rather than have to ship all the way over there, the raw materials, then ship the finished goods back. Nobody wanted to do that. They had to do it to survive. American companies had to leave America and start manufacturing overseas because they could not survive the conditions in America. Watch those conditions. If we don't have a major radical change of leadership in our country really soon, we're going to be past the point where we can recover from what has happened in our nation. We can't wait. This can't wait. We've got to have a change of leadership. Now, with the initiative that Putin is taking right now, I tell you, the world has changed really dramatically. We need to understand all of the consequences of this, not just in foreign affairs, in the world economy, and it's going to come right down to every one of our doorsteps, to our us, our families, our churches. A major shift is going on. We've got to understand this.